Hey, this is Dan Cass. And this is Miss Liz. And you're tuned into the WeWo Show. Temple University's number one entertainment show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuned into the greatest entertainment show of all time. You are locked into the WeWo Show. My name is Dan Cash, and joining me tonight, we have everyone's favorite producer, DJ Monet. And of course, as promised, Modern Baseball will be on the show tonight. They so are excited. just getting in right now. Typical Modern. They're always late to the show. Always. They but have, it's so they cool, have though, never... because they're, they're definitely worth worth the wait. They are worth the wait. They've never been to the WeWo Show on time. <laughs> which, which makes me think that I should start lying about what time the show is. Right. But anyway, we're going to wait on them. We're going to play some other Philly local artists. When we get back, we're going to keep on updating you. Modern Baseball coming soon. Don't go anywhere. WHIP. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to the We Will Show here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. We just got through jamming to the 100 Acre Woods with All I Love, followed by the Cold Fronts with Heart Attack. Take it away, Dan. Thank you very much, DJ Monet. Yes, Modern Baseball is still playing Divas, and they're not here yet. They are on 16th and Gerard, so maybe if I talk really slow. They'll be here in time. They'll be here. But anyway, I'm not going to do that to you. I'm just going to give you quick little updates. But I do want to tell an antidote okay. that happened to me. Oh, I was no. in, I was it, in, It's a story. Not really a story. Just It made me smack my head so hard I got a concussion. Uh, <laughs> I'm sitting in history class. Literally. And it's in uh, American military culture. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about the military after World War or the Revolutionary War. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Thomas Jefferson. Mm-hmm. And the Louisiana Purchase, and my professor asks the class, you guys know who Lewis and Clark are? Right. And without missing a beat, a kid goes, first in flight? And I was like, oh, what? No. You don't know who Lewis and Clark are? Are you serious? That's the Wright brothers, yeah, sir. They're, they're, they're like the people who just expanded yes. the United States to the West and went on a crazy expedition to find new land. Well, not new land, but to explore the America's was... new purchase. Mm-hmm. First in flight, someone's clearly never been to North Carolina and seen a license plate of that. That was sad. I just... He, the, my history teacher played it off well. He was like, right. oh, no. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like if I was a history teacher mm-hmm. and that happened, I'd be like, get out of my class. <laughs> I can't get through to you. Uh, if you don't know the fundamentals of American history, then... You should not be here. I'm sorry. I just... Oh, mother. I just can't... I still can't get over it. That's crazy. I actually had a history teacher who... He was just like that kind of sarcastic teacher who every time you made a comment... He, like, disproved your comment in every single way. So the co- the entire class would just be afraid to say anything because it's like, I'm not sure if I'm going to sound smart. He always played devil's advocate. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I'm just like. Those people are the worst. Stop. That's not cool. Well, speaking of the worst, I guess the WeWo show is in that category because our guests are still not here. But Bye. I kid. I kid. We're going to take a quick break, play another song, and hopefully when we come back, they'll be here. Stay tuned to the WeWo Show on WHIP Whip Radio. Hey, 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 everyone. Happy Wednesday and welcome back to the WeWo Show here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Yes, number one. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, DJ Monet. And yes, as promised, modern baseball is here. We have Ian Farmer. Hi, guys. From high school? He plays bass. <laughs> Ian Farmer in high school. And of course, we have Jake, <sighs> guitarist and half lead singer. How do you and Brendan introduce yourself? Because you both share equal duties in the band. Uh, I used to say I'm Jake. I play guitar and sing sometimes. But now I have some more songs, so I say... Yeah, you sing about half the time. Yeah, I'm Jake and I sing and play guitar. And a, and a congratulations to you guys. Incredibly Thanks. big news. Thank you guys you. are 84 Woo! on the Billboard charts. Hey. And number one nice. on the vinyl Billboard charts. Woo! It's incredible. That's Thank cool. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you feel when you got that news? Uh, we were kind of like pooping our pants a bit. Yeah, completely. I mean, I sent you a Snapchat of when I did that, Dan. <laughs> I know you did. 
Me and Ian have this gross thing where whenever we're on the toilets, uh, we Snapchat each other. That's Yo. a little bit And gross. Ian, Ian, Ian screenshots it, so he has blackmail for me when he becomes famous. Oh, I'm making God. a book of it. You guys are so weird. <laughs> Actually, I know a lot of men that do that. Yeah. Is so. it going to be called Everybody and Dan Poops? <laughs> All right, but but let's let's get down to business. How do you guys feel? You released this album two weeks ago, two weeks to yesterday. Yeah, I th- well, well, one, one week. One, one week. Oh, yeah, it, it, came, it, came, it pretty it much came out two weeks ago. ago. Um, it's pretty whack. It's the th- coolest thing about this is that, well, obviously, okay, it's like really, really freaking cool, and it's kind <laughs> of like I was just sitting there not saying anything for a while. But one thing that's really nice about this is that it's a thing that like. Older people know what Billboard is, so when your yeah. grandma asks you, like, what are you doing with your life? You can say, oh, look, I did this. And they're like, I know what that is. <laughs> so, was that's your, cool. Was your grandma the first one you called today? <laughs> no, I forget who the first one was. Uh, Mitchell Rodrick sent me a picture of a puppy this morning. He was probably the first oh, one. Oh, really? I was like, good job. And there was a puppy who had, like, wheels attached to his back. So Aww. he was, like, hanging. So, I should have yeah, sent one of my pictures. I have, like, pictures of baby animals. Yeah, dude. I would have given you a baby dolphin. <laughs> dude, Dylan, Dylan sent me this sick... Um, gif or jif or however you say it, <laughs> of this dude just like increasingly getting like laughing harder and harder <laughs> kind of like Eric does. he's like yeah. <laughs> damn that's so, yeah. sick that was, you need it's to do funny. that as a song intro <laughs> on your next <laughs> album <laughs> that's how it'll go completely different band <laughs> I get a concept credit for that song by the way <laughs> so, <laughs> so where did the title you're gonna miss it all come from besides me texting Ian that today <laughs> on your way here actually yeah we thought of it today yeah we thought of it today um, <laughs> from the future I was kind of late in the game we have know. a time machine <laughs> went back yeah went right back there. wrote it on Jake's forehead one night and then what? when I woke up next to him I saw it on his forehead and there we Whoa. go here we are <laughs> that is oh, so so not <laughs> the net. it was like uh it was fourth of July last year. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't there, but oh, I know. Yeah, that's right, R. I. P. Well yeah. I was you with were there that in guy. spirit. Oh wow, that's he weird. Was. Here we are. Hey Dan. Fourth of July, we're on the roof and uh they were we were like watching the fireworks and stuff and I was like up there with my girlfriend and Brendan was up there with his girlfriend and like we had some other friends up there and everything was like going off, but I was really sick and like uncomfortable. And I had to blow my nose really bad, and it was like the fireworks had been going on for a while, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I like started getting off the roof, and Brendan was like, where are you going? And I was like, I got to blow my nose. And then he made fun of me, <laughs> and then our other friend was like, yo, you're going to miss it all. And then like three months later, Brendan was like, we should call the album that. So I don't know. Yeah. It's funny. We said the same thing to Ian on 4th of July because he didn't know where he was. Damn. Yeah, I got lost. <laughs> you missed the fireworks. I missed the fireworks. You did miss it I all. Did. I was like Dave last year. Our friend Dave last year got lost, was late there, drove separately home to our friend Drew's house, and it took him an hour and a half because he got on the highway the wrong way. <laughs> and then with me, I was coming there. Um, my girlfriend and I had gone out for dinner at some place. Denny's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Red probably Lobster. a de- <laughs> Red Lobster, Red Lobster, my, my treat. treat. Um, Arby's, it was Arby's. It, it, Yo, it was probably, serious? no, it was Arby's. Ian's girlfriend loves Arby's. And probably. White Castle. Emily Hakes works there. <laughs> Shout out, Emily Hakes. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, we were driving and got very lost, and then we found it and couldn't find parking. And the Dang. the Google Maps took us to, like, just some random apartment complex. <laughs> um, I say apartment, but I mean condos. And... <laughs> It, That's like we a just nice got apartment. lost and we just hung out with some people. Not really. We just drove around very frustrated <laughs> uh, and stopped off at Wawa to make everything better. That's, that <laughs> sounds good. That sounds amazing. Well, we're going to play your new single, Your Graduation. When we get back, we're going to talk about that and a little bit about recording. You're going to miss it all. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the WeWo Show here on WHIP, Philly's number one grab. Philly's number one college radio station, Tongue Twister. You just got through listening to Modern Baseball with your graduation. Take it away, Dan. Muchas gracias. I like the Spanish thing I've been De doing. Nada. Si. Como Muchas gracias. Oh, that's terrible. Donde está los, uh, los... Donde está Jesus? Yeah, donde está Jesus? Jesus, Jesus está aquí. 
Oh, that, that was something. So, so what was the writing process behind your graduation? I know that was a Brendan Penn song. That was a Brendan well, Jam. Well, we paid a bunch of, we found a website where we paid a bunch of people to write our songs Riffwriters.com. Is that a website? If you, oh, wait, can we promote things on the radio? You can promote whatever you want. So Riffwriters.com, highly, highly support it. Very affordable. Very, not actually. No, <laughs> not actually. Not. Is that an actual that. website, though? For it real? is an actual yeah. website. Yeah. Somebody made, like, a joke when they found out about it on Twitter that was like, modern baseball uses Riffwriters all the time but my dad thought it was serious he's also really active on twitter and he <laughs> tweeted back at that person and he was like no they write all their own songs and it was like, actually oh. me that person was me really <laughs> yes. wait what that was you me. Were the one that said, oh, yeah, and he wrote back you? at me. No, he knew it was me. He wrote back, no, actually, Jake and Brent oh wrote their songs. You're a troublemaker on Twitter. <laughs> because when you, over the summer on your summer tour, there was hashtag come hug Ian. Oh, God. What is the story yeah. behind that? Yeah, don't ask me. Jake can I am going to ask one. you. It was like, uh, yeah, I guess it was like an off the cuff <laughs> thing before it actually became like a really serious, important uh best decision we ever made as a band thing uh -huh. when we were just like driving to a show in the summer uh, and we would like tweet every day before the show and say oh we're playing wherever like come to the show and hang out or like come bring your dog or something like that and mm -hmm. you, you say something cute every time and this one day Brennan was just like hashtag come huggy and we were like hmm and then we got to the show and we, for the next few shows, we started doing this thing where we were like, yeah, thanks so much for having us. I'll leave the last song. You know, just like, so we're, thank you so much for coming. Uh, remember, come hug Ian. Just during the song, if you feel so obliged, just run up on stage and give him a hug and then jump <laughs> off. And kids would actually like, when we played the weekend, kids would stage dive up to the stage and then hug Ian while he was playing bass and then jump back in the crowd. And there were certain shows where it was just like a circle of people going in and out. And there were times when like we would just get into the venue and then out of nowhere, someone would just like run up and hug me and then would be gone by the time I learned or I uh, turned around. I was like, I don't know who just hugged me. <laughs> it's such a it mystery. How has that been on playing bass and being hugged? Is that a weird thing? He does a good job. I mean, playing bass is easy. <laughs> it's such an easy instrument. Still practicing the crowd surfing and playing bass, but that's pretty good. Too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that. only because um, my cable gets pulled out. Yeah, yeah. So gotta it's go like, wireless pretty soon. You gotta go. We gotta go wireless now. True. I've been practicing my guitar spins before. <laughs> Say, yo, Sid, what's We're up? We're gonna look like anti-flag. Yo. Are you gonna Are you gonna call your greatest hits? We hugged Ian. <laughs> Dan, That's I a really you. good idea. Thank you. We, we Concept credit. I hate you. <laughs> 2009 to 2045. We actually we thought of, um, we brainstormed a couple names. Uh, For greatest hits this album. <laughs> Insomniac. Uh, American Idiot. You brought me your bullets, I brought you my valentine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Freaking uh, uh, Motion City soundtrack. Right. Oh, Lord. Right. And then you got... And Dan Casarella. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys recorded... No one really expected you to come out with a, a second album so quickly, because sports really took wildfire in 2013. And then you were like, what album? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how you did it in my mind. Uh, what, what was the mentality oh behind releasing an album so soon? Uh, we kind of just... We, it was the only time we really had to do true. it, mm -hmm. and we just kind of wanted to, and we had the songs. Mm. And so. the songs that we had written for sports were written a while before, or most of the songs were written a while before sports actually came out. So by the time sports came out, we were already writing like a handful of new songs, and we were just kind of like, well, if people are listening right now, then let's just get this train a roll and ma. Choo choo. So, choo choo. We just choo choo, choo, -choo all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys recorded it too in a very short amount of time, right? Uh, yeah. Well, pretty we, short. We did it in like weeks. we did it in like two two weeks or so. But um, the problem was studio time was hard to book, and sometimes studios didn't cooperate with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was it was a much more frantic two weeks than it could have been. <laughs> but it was nice because we demoed all the songs before we went in, but. If we hadn't done that, and also we would have been screwed. Yeah, because we like did we did a we were in school and then we got out of school and did a tour for like two weeks, right? Uh, With the mixtape store. I think that was only one. Yeah, but, that was like one week, and yeah. then we got back and recorded for two and a half weeks. But it was like we literally <laughs> had to like 
leave for another that was when the US tour started for 40 days yeah. after that last like uh-huh. two and a half week day so we were <laughs> it, was, freaking... it, it was like it was like family time girlfriend time and, and recording, recording studio time. time that was awful and it was really 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 tough we like <laughs> there were, we did a pretty good job getting like everything done but there was definitely like the, I think the first or second day of tour was in Maryland, so like we were at Brendan's <laughs> house, and I just brought an SM57 with me because I had to record one more guitar part. So uh-huh. there's like a guitar riff in like the third song that I just recorded like with an SM57 in Brendan's basement after we had already left because we just didn't have time to. And now and then, everyone knows that secret. <laughs> but yep. you you worked with a pretty high known or well known mixer, Dude. Jonathan Lowe. He's yeah, he killed on it. the low. He's, he's like. A- just He's the don't best. mess with him because he'll it, like everything know, that he's put out really well. <laughs> recently sounds really good. Yep, he um, works the national for yep. most yep. of their albums. He engineered the national record, um, but also that restorations record that yeah. he recorded sounds really, 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 <laughs> really good. <laughs> that was what made us be like, "Yo, we gotta." Well, we didn't even consider it because we always thought that he was. Too high profile. Like, too yeah. high profile. Well, and also out of our price range because. Mm-hmm. Well, that's we where one for cover came in, right? Man. Yeah. Um, then, well, we found out that, well, we knew that Sean worked with him, but Sean's like, yeah, I think he, he would be into it. And then Wait we started talking. We're like, oh my God, this is, this is a possibility. Yeah. And so then we did it. <laughs> and it, it was so funny because, uh, like, it was really hard to kind of grasp the situation after he started sending us stuff he had worked on because it was so much better than like anything like we've obviously heard great records before uh-huh. but nothing we'd never heard our music sound like that so mm-hmm. when he sent us the first mixes and it was like okay like tell me what you like tell me what you don't like we put him on in the van and we were just like oh my god this is <laughs> insane how can I tell you you've done anything wrong because you're like the smartest person in the universe and I love you it's like we lo- we love sports we recorded sports mm-hmm. and had somebody mix that one too. Mm-hmm. We didn't know what we were doing when we recorded it, mm-hmm. and the dude who mixed it is a good is he's good. Yeah, he did a good job. Yeah, but he, he had did to a work job. with like he had to we, work yeah. with whatever we came up with, and this time John Lowe came, did, worked with whatever we <laughs> came call up him with. John High because <laughs> of his <laughs> quality. Well, anyway, here's one of those songs HQ. from "You're Gonna Miss It All." This is Apartment right here on WHIP Whip Radio. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the We Will Show here on WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. We're joined here by the number 84 on the Billboard album, number one on the Vine Records, Modern Baseball, who you just listened to. Take it away, guys. Thank you very much, Monet. Even though you made fun of me and said <laughs> my handwriting is awful, it's cool. Oh, a lot of stuff happens is. behind the brain. You do but a pretty it bad is. handwriting. But it yeah. is. I've known you for years. You, you have awful awful handwriting. Terrible handwriting. Here. But you're smart, so it's okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> of all the compliments, you could be like, but you're tall, so it's okay. <laughs> that one's true. Now, Apartment, that is my personal favorite from Aww, the, the album. Not trying Thanks. to suck up. <laughs> but um, obviously, it's a very straightforward story. Yeah. Is that entirely true? Uh, I'm not trying to like give away any secrets, but yeah, pretty much like literally everything is exactly as it happened. It's, not, <laughs> it's, it's about, about Princess Peach. About what? Yeah, me and Princess Peach had a pretty yeah, it's about him and Princess Peach. Last year. Well, it's, it's one of those songs I was like, I really like it, but I really can't come up with any questions about it. It's super straightforward. <laughs> That's what happens, you know? Yeah. But yeah. I like that line at the end about getting dinner. Yeah, well, making dinner. Making dinner, excuse me. It, it just, it's because Jake's too cheap to actually get dinner. That's totally true. That's okay. <laughs> We're learning here. But that's so cute because then you spend time and you make it Aww. and you prep the dinner and it's like it's a it's a intimate you know yeah, bonding totally. with the food. Hanging out, cutting bonding. up food, making dinner, <laughs> making dinner, <laughs> making a, some sort of pasta dish. Yeah, definitely. Pa- that, at that time, Boiled pasta, store bought sauce. I like got really good at making pasta with he like, is, grilled, he is very good grilled vegetables, mm-hmm. and it felt like a real adult meal because it had like vegetables in it. <laughs> but then I, it was literally the only thing I would cook and it was just like I bet you got sick of that yeah I got kind (laughs) of old so I think eventually uh, you're gonna miss it my girlfriend started seeing through the facade he was like (laughs) but you can cook one thing 
Whoa. I don't want to have this every day. If you think one thing really good, it's better than one thing really bad. True. Or a lot of things really bad. True. Now, I, I, a running theme in your band this past couple of weeks is haircuts. Ian, you got a haircut. <laughs> I did. I got the first real haircut of my life. Yeah. It looks great, by the way. Oh, thank you. Someone's trying to copy I still my need style. to. <laughs> I, well, I went to the barber, and I went you with my roommate, Eric. And I was just like, he was like, okay, so what am I doing for you? And I was like, uh, I Give me the know. Damn I, want it, I want it shorter. <laughs> I want it shorter. He's like, well, are, are you going to, do you want it like off your ears? Like, uh, yeah, maybe, I guess. <laughs> and then he's like, are you, well, are you going to comb it? I was like, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I haven't done that I have really. To see my parents. <laughs> it's and called so a he's half like, part. okay, I'm going to make you look good. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. We but sure the most interesting haircut in the band <laughs> comes from your other lead singer and guitarist, Brendan. Who's desperate for attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the arrow's even pointing to his face, you know? Like, yeah, look at he's me. just like, hey, everybody, have look at my so, face. So he, let me get the story correct. He shaved his head to look like Avatar, yes. the last airbender. Well, he has the shaved head, uh-huh. but I did the shaving. Oh, very nice. In the bathroom. Jake's the real artist. talented. Yeah, I'm and, the real behind the story. Here. And why did he save the arrow into his head? Well, it was if Run for Cover, if we did a thousand pre orders of the vinyl on mm-hmm. Run for Cover, then uh, Brendan, Brendan was like, if we do this, I'm going to shave my head like Avatar. I guess it was like a fan appreciation thing. It's like, I really care about you guys. I really appreciate Fans you. Fans of modern baseball or Avatar? I guess both. <laughs> yeah, I respect you. Does uh, he watch Avatar? Maybe. He will now. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, he could probably like get some like some kind of special perks if he's like, "Yo, I'm in this band. I have this cool haircut. We're like advertising you. Can I get some Avatar?" Support? When I first saw him from the front, he kind of scared me because he looked like Chuck Liddell, the <laughs> UFC fighter. <laughs> And every time he like said something to me, I was just like, "Yeah, yeah, sure, whatever you want, dude." Like, <laughs> yeah, don't don't kill me. Because from the front, it just looks like a it, like a crew cut. It yeah. looks like a bad mohawk. Yeah, true, true. I wish I could. Then you get it. that aerial view, and it's like, damn, this guy's got something in him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ian, you should have gotten Zach Braff's haircut because you look so similar to him. <laughs> Shut up, John Heater. <laughs> damn. <laughs> now you guys have a very big tour coming up. Starting yeah. next month mm-hmm. with the Wonder Years. How did that happen? We played the record release show. We did. And I guess that was at the first Unitarian Church here in Philadelphia. Rat, rat. Shout out. Stones throw down the alley over Shout there. Out. Favorite venue in America. <laughs> yeah, true though. But yeah, uh, they asked us to play that, and we were like, "Yeah, duh," because we like. <laughs> well, not at first. <laughs> at first, we were uh, like. Yeah. At first, Jake and I are still in school. And we were like, we want to finish school. Oh, no, I was talking about the release show. Oh, the release show. Yeah. That just happened. We were like, yeah. But then yeah. tour came up, and we were like, eh, I don't know if we can do this because we have school. And yeah. we, we originally said no, and then they were like, well, are you sure? And we are like, <laughs> okay, we were dumb. We're sorry. <laughs> yeah. We, like, had this the most freaking nerve-wracking, not nerve-wracking, but just, like, Intense conversations. With, like, our academic advisors and, like, our parents, and we're like, can we make this work? Because we, we're both really close to graduating, because mm-hmm. we had a bunch of, like, AP, AP credits. credits. Yeah, we were on track to graduate early. Yeah. And so now we're, we we go back to school in the summer and we graduate on time. Yeah. Which is That's also part nice. of what's sold to the parents. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, we'll still graduate, this, but I'm still graduating on time. And they were like, oh, sick. See, Ian Vegan so, in high school paid off. Yeah. <laughs> now you're a rock star. <laughs> So, when when I saw you guys for the first time about a year ago, uh, in early was that, January, that was at the Cracker uh, Factory. That was at the Cracker shout Factory. Shout out, R.I.P. R- Cracker Factory. Peace. God rest her soul. Yeah. She uh, will shout be out missed. to Nick Finelli. In her name we pray. Shout out to Pete Pie. Pour, shout out to PS2. Out. Shout out to Pato. Well, for, for those <laughs> for those of uh, our listeners who don't know, that's you know a dingy, typical local basement show. Dingy but spiritually bright. Yes. <laughs> spiritually. <laughs> With a, a year, big a year rancid later, poster. <laughs> <laughs> you guys played Starland Ballroom, you played the TLA, really big, not big, big, but well-known venues. What was that like, you know, f- from a year later? It was weird. very weird. People don't step on your pedals. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Well, they, they kind of did it. Yeah, the yeah TLA. they still do, true. Um, but it was, it was kind of crazy for us um, just seeing so many people out there. 
I mean, obviously we weren't headlining these shows or anything. We were just the openers, but kids still seemed to care about us, which was yeah. very, very weird. To I've us. been we to did many, not expect that at all. many shows. It was awesome at Starland, but, and that's the thing. Is well, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say I've never seen anybody react that way for an opening band. Nobody Aww. reacted it that way crazy. for Santa Claus when he opened up for yeah, Pepper. Yeah, Ian and I saw <laughs> Santa Claus open up for Pepper. He was rapping. It was literally this yeah. albino DJ, and he looked like Santa Claus. What are you saying? <laughs> the most ratchet word. <laughs> it was very inappropriate. Damn. That's it strange. was. I don't even know how to react to that. But poor yeah. Habit killed it. Yeah, poor Habit was at that show too. Yeah. And they were not Santa Claus. They opened they for Pepper? Not. They, they opened, opened for Pepper. Pepper. It oh, was weird. Because they got kind of like a punk and reggae kind of okay. thing going. I never actually listen to I just know the t shirt that you wear all the time. <laughs> yeah. You bought I, that at that night. I don't know where that t shirt went. Man. Rest in peace, T-shirt. Rest yeah. in peace. Well, wait. What I was gonna say was that with these new venue shows, we would we were like playing the basement shows for a while and being really active on the internet and stuff. Mm-hmm. So people would listen to us online. But like when there's a show at the Cracker Factory and you're just like a normal kid in the suburbs, you don't hear about it. Mm-hmm. You don't so, really know where to go yeah. either. So they just like they just didn't really know where to go. But when we started playing these shows at venues that people actually knew, then we got the chance to like connect with these kids that never got to see us before, and they were like, "Hey," and we were like, "Yo, crap, you're <laughs> here." So that was cool. And something very exciting, you guys are going on your first European tour. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How'd you guys pull that off? Uh, no, it wasn't uh, you. We, uh, we were just like, hey, we kind of want to go on a European tour. And then our friends and real friends, yep. who we toured with this summer, um, they were like, hey, we want to go on a European tour. Do you want to come with us? And we were like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. And you're going to a lot of cool places. You're going to England, Ireland. Of yeah, for Sean. Yep. Sean's very Holland. excited for Ireland. Well, we're not we're not actually going to Ireland, but Sean is. Yeah, he's going to Ireland before we go to Europe. Like and for three meeting weeks. us there. <laughs> he's such a. If there was a word for like people who are nerdy about Ireland, he would be that word. Yeah. Irish. Well, did you hear? So. And then also, everybody except us like are are doing cool things. Um, our manager and tour manager Eric. Um, is actually going to Portugal for a week beforehand and then is going to Belgium to go to Gros Rock, which is like Yo, the coolest festival in the world. Yeah. Huh. So hopefully he meets Then Portugal we're again. like boringly <laughs> flying into London from Philadelphia, uh, from Newark, actually. Well, we get to visit so Newark. Boring. Newark. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you're still going to an amazing place. We gotta take place. one of those pictures where you're like, you put your hands above and like or on top of the Eiffel Tower and you're like, I'm holding it in my fingers. And you like, Oh, there's a picture, the, there's like a the picture Eiffel probably on Facebook that my dad took of my brother and I stomping on the Eiffel Tower. Oh, wow. <laughs> you guys, third Dang. album cover. Whoa, here it comes. <laughs> Can't wait for that one. It'll be called R.I.P. It'll, It'll be called, called R.I.P. France. <laughs> right, yeah. He's France. So and Dan Cast. Before, before we, we wrap up the show, do you have any last minute plugs for anything? Uh, Shout out to... <laughs> Shout out to the hotelier. Shout out to shout out to the hotelier. Shout out to Tiny Moving Parts. TMP. I got some weird videos sent to me from what happened when they blacked out in Chicago last oh night. Oh my god. Huh. Involving a mask and a whip. Oh um, god. <laughs> WHIP. Yo. Like our kind of whip. Yeah. Shout out to Sorority Noise. A boy Cam holding it down, making the noise in the sororities. Shout out to Old Grey. Shout out to Old Grey, keeping it grey. Shout Old. out to Eric Chaya and all of his bands. Yeah, Eric Chaya in Iceland. Shout out to the Menzingers the for releasing an awesome, awesome, awesome song also yesterday. Also recorded by John Lowe. Yes. I guarantee you none of these people are listening. But <laughs> Shout out to Dan Cass's mom. Yeah, I'm she's sure listening. Right, she's great. One. Joan's listening. You Hi, Joan. One. Hey, Joan. Hi, Miss Joan. Joan. Anyway, uh, we're going to wrap it up. This is the closing track on the album. This is Pothole. Thank you so much cool. for coming on. Tune in tomorrow. We got guests from TUTV, Modern Baseball. See them on their upcoming tour at the Electric Factory with the Wonder Years. Have a great night. Thanks, Bye. Dan.